Chan Ezra here. With Adobe Media Encoder CS6, Adobe dramatically improved the program's usability and especially performance. In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate all new features and provide a general overview of the operation of Adobe Media Encoder CS6. As an overview, Adobe Media Encoder, which you're looking at here, functions as an encoding engine for Premiere Pro and for After Effects, as well as a standalone encoder. So when I'm producing a file for streaming encoding, I would create the file as normal in Premiere Pro and then choose File, Export, Media, and that gets me to the Export Settings dialog from the Adobe Media Encoder. If I click Q, it's going to show up here in the Q window and will get encoded to this preset as soon as I press the Start Q icon. It also functions very similarly from, uh, from Adobe After Effects. You would export a composition to the Adobe Media Encoder. You can also add a source file directly. Here's how you do that. Let's add a, an HD file. And let's delete the uh, sequence from Adobe Premiere Pro. We'll just remove that. And you can also add an After Effects composition or a Premiere Pro sequence directly from within the program. In addition to creating entries in the Q window, you can also create a watch folder. Watch folder is any folder on your hard drive that you designate as a watch folder. It doesn't have to be called watch, which I've done here in my desktop. And you select the folder here, and then any files that you drop into the folder will be encoded to the selected preset or presets once the file is dropped in. And that's automatic operation. Anybody who can access that folder uh, in a shared workgroup setting, that can be a lot of different people on a, on a LAN, can access the encoding that's provided by Adobe Media Encoder. So watch folder operation is a very, very powerful feature for shared use of the Adobe Media Encoder. Once I'm ready to start encoding, again, I click the Start Q icon, and then Encoding starts. Now, all that's pretty similar to how the Adobe Media Encoder worked in previous versions of the Creative Suite and previous versions of all products that it's included with. What's new in the product is the preset browser. Now, not only are there tons of new presets, it also operates a little bit differently, and it's a little more convenient to add presets to the Q window or to a watch folder. And I'll demonstrate that in a second once we look at some of the new presets. So the presets have been reorganized. Nothing, nothing huge here, but you've got presets for broadcast, H.264, MPEG-2, and MXF. You've got camera presets if you want to create video to send back to a camera. You've got a bunch of device presets. All of the Android, or let me just say many of the Android presets are, are brand new. And Adobe's always done a pretty good job with Apple presets. I think they've added a few here. And you've also got presets for generic presets for mobile, tablets, and then TiVo. You've got DVD and Blu-ray presets, Blu-ray or H.264 and MPEG-2. DVD, of course, is just MPEG-2. You've got presets for image sequences. And then here are your web video presets. In, in, uh, three main categories are Flash. Flash includes F4V, which is H.264, and FLV, which is VP6. And you've got a lot of presets for both Vimeo and YouTube. We're looking at the Mac version of the product. If you were looking at the Windows version, you should have presets for Windows Media Encoding as well. Those are the new presets, and they're conveniently organized in the preset browser. The other cool thing you can do is you can load multiple presets at, at one time. So we've got these selected. Let me hold down the Command key, and then I drag those onto the test file. And we've got encoding for 75, 55, 35, and 45. And then if I wanted to change this one to the 1800, and then I've got my presets set here. Let me add a couple more and just kind of random here. Smaller ones. So this is an 8-core Macintosh. Let me add 8 presets to the um, to the test file that we selected here. Operation works identically with watch folders. If you want to encode a single watch folder to multiple output presets, you just drag them on. And in previous versions of Adobe Media Encoder, you'd have to manually add a separate line item for adding a preset to the encoding batch. In this case, you can drag multiple presets onto the file, and then you get multiple encodes. Not a huge time saving, but it is, it is a lot more convenient. Now, the biggest new feature from my perspective is parallel encoding. So in previous versions of the Adobe Media Encoder, it functions serially. So it would encode this file first, and then this file, and then this file, and then this file, which really wasn't all that efficient if you had a multiple core computer. 
In this version, it encodes in parallel, which means that in a second or two, you should start to see eight different encodes of the same source file. We can see six encodes. If I drag this down, we'll see the other two. The reason it's so sluggish is we're using just about 100% of system resources. So if you've got a multiple core computer, like this eight core Macintosh, you get very efficient encoding. Okay, how does this look from a benchmark perspective? Well, these are some tests that I put together for Streaming Media West, a presentation I gave there in May of 2012. And I looked at four different encoding scenarios. This is a single file to a single file output. This is SD, this is HD. And, you know, parallel encoding doesn't help you here. And Adobe Media Encoder is the slowest in the, uh, this is about a six minute test file, slowest here, four minutes and 13 seconds. Episode came in in 154 and squeeze came in in 135. Um, different order, but uh, same overall results. Squeeze won the, uh, the single HD file to single HD preset in 32 seconds. Episode was 234 and Adobe Media Encoder was 127. Again, because these are single file to single file encodes, the parallel processing doesn't help you. But this is the scenario where Adobe Media Encoder really was focused on, and this is the single file to multiple outputs. Kind of the adaptive streaming scenario where, you know, as we saw in the demonstration a few minutes ago, you encode a single file to multiple outputs. And here, Squeeze was 406, Episode was 1344, and the Adobe Media Encoder was 211. So this is the real sweet spot for the new encoding. And it's a very relevant sweet spot because a lot of producers are starting to encode a single source file to multiple outputs. And then this is the last scenario. This is eight files all to a single output. And as we see, Adobe Media Encoder is slowest here because parallel encoding isn't going on. Okay, so that's Adobe Media Encoder CS6. The new presets browser makes its growing family of presets a lot easier to find and apply, while parallel encoding really speeds one-to-many encoding scenarios. I'm Jan Ozer. Thanks for watching.